A very good afternoon and welcome to Falun in Sweden for the last weekend of Cross Country World Cup action. One or two technical issues, I'm afraid, here in the uh, studio and uh, hence uh, slightly complicated uh, commentating system that we've uh, established, but uh, we've missed nothing so far. The first nine starters underway and we're waiting, uh, of course, for the big names who go off at the end of this prologue. Petter Nortug will be starting last, having won the sprint in Stockholm and it sets up an absolutely cracking finish to the World Cup with three men only 40 points apart. Nortug is there, Kolonia is there, and Alexander Legkov, perhaps the most likely winner, come uh, Sunday afternoon. Mike Dixon alongside myself, Patrick Winston. Mike, uh, firstly, Stockholm was a, a fantastic race. A little bit disappointing that, that it's it all come down to the upper body and uh, the double polling technique. Uh, but it, it's really set up the perfect finale for the cross-country season. I do like, uh, Patrick, the way that the, the final four days of racing for the season, it's, a, it's a, as you say, a classic, although it was mostly double polling. And then today we've got the, the freestyle and a, a very short, not a sprint, it's an endurance race, but it's testing the athletes. And of course, tomorrow the 10 kilometer Mastar Classic and then the pursuit finally on Sunday. So a fantastic blend for the end of the season. And my word, this is fast from Clara. He showed uh, his worth at the World Championship, World Championships. In fact, the Italian relay team only 0.2 of a second off a medal there. So 3.3 kilometres. Uh, Clara with a good run. Just looking at the winning time from last year, 8.16 for this distance. But the course has been changed due to the snow conditions here in the southwest of Sweden. Uh, it looks beautifully sunny. In fact, the temperature now starting to drop uh, just after 5 o'clock local time here in Sweden. Got up uh, well above zero in the bright sunshine earlier on today. Here comes Lukas Bauer, the winner of the overall World Cup back in 2008. Through the checkpoint, 4.7 seconds outside. Now, it is possible to make up that sort of a margin but it will all depend on how fresh Lucas is at the start of the downhill. Here Darlan who joined the World Cup Tour with uh, great expectations on his shoulders and largely because of his ability to climb hills. And of course uh, Patrick Year Darlan the 50 kilometer on Sunday he did a huge amount of the hard work uh, to to assist his teammate Peter Nortug over some uh, well, as he, as Nortig was fading over some 15, 20 kilometers, and Yer Dallin, for me, it looks like he's still suffering from that Saturday race. Uh, I know that hill, it's tough, it, uh, it's a severe climb, and then you get this nice descent into the stadium area. Narus pushing well, technically good in the freestyle. Don't think he's going to trouble... Uh, Clara's time. In fact, I think he's slightly up uh, on Clara's time last time we looked. So uh, maybe a new lead time as he comes in. Well, we get a split time at about 3.07. That's the fastest at the moment. Michael Sompi of Canada has produced the fastest intermediate time. It sounds to me as though that's someone who's gone out with 110% uh, effort on the uphill and will just try and survive on the way down. There's a lot of time to be lost on the downhills. Uh, as well as the up, so uh, its pacing is all important. Tourischev goes through in a respectable 3.11 for Russia, and the Russians today hoping, hoping that Legkov can do something special. Legkov starts uh, relatively early, starts number 28 today, will be uh, just a few minutes behind Marcus Hellner, who's expected to do something uh, pretty good, and of course uh, Dario Colonia having uh, mucked up in the sprint in Stockholm, starts number 37. Jesperson through the 1.2. Now it's about the long, long work back down into the stadium. Lukas Bauer on the finish of his run. 5.22. 5.31 the time he's after. It's going to be close, but I think Lukas Bauer might be just outside. A couple of seconds adrift, and Roland Clara remains the fastest so far.
and Clara's time of 5.31 under threat, 16 seconds for the last 150 metres. It's going to have to be very quick from Jesperson if he's going to take the lead away. Still some six seconds to get inside. There's the 50 metre marker and Jesperson will have to settle for uh, second or third. 5.33 just misses out on that as well. Uh, he's starting to pair the top positions, but still Italy there. Now the Italians will love to be part of there, but the one man that would like to see on top of the order is, uh, of course, Di Cienta, who's uh, perhaps the most experienced man out there today with, uh, well, some 223 World Cups to his name. Pellegrino, who's also had some good runs this season. 5.28, he's just outside as well, but my goodness, it's tight here, and not a lot of time being won and lost as far as this mini-tour is concerned. Well, it's uh, just as it unfolds here, it shows that Roland Clara has had the, by far the best descent out of anybody because he was only in sixth position at the 1.2 at the high point and uh, had a fantastic second part of his race. And it's a, it's a course that um, really is massively uh, about the, the speed and the power of climbing and then really this technical section down to the finish line is Hofer. The Italians certainly showing that their skis are running well today. Hofer was in fifth place at the halfway marker. Slightly surprised, Mike, that uh, the Italians who, when sprinting, really became a major part of the cross-country scene back in 2002 when they had Christian Zorzi, why they haven't managed to maintain their strength? Do you think it's something to do with the Italian physique? I mean, they must be about 12, 14 inches taller than the average Norwegian. Or do you think it's that they've started to focus on the endurance events? It's surprising, as you say, when Zorzi uh, sprint racing came in, Zorzi was the cutting edge. He was the man everybody watched. And normally you get with a country, when that happens, that the, the youngsters are inspired by that. And the, there was a program there to carry the rest through. But they really haven't shown since Zorzi. And, and I notice now that Zorzi came second in the Engadine Marathon just, what, uh, two weeks ago. So he's, he's really gone out to the longer distance races. Jean-Marc Gaillard, one of the Frenchmen that's had uh, back problems recently, but he's put in a respectable time here into the top 10 for now. But remember, a field of 53 and the best going off last and the best from the Stockholm sprint going off the very last. Petter Nortug will be trying to extend his lead in the mini tour, but really for Nortug, it is all about the overall World Cup. And, uh, well, it's uh, such a fantastic uh, situation that we have at the top. Three men could take the title this year. I think down in fourth place, Polterani, he's over 300 points behind, and we have 300 points left to take. 50 today, 50 tomorrow, and then the winner of the mini tour here in Farland will pick up a whopping 200 World Cup points, which could sway it. And Mike, uh, where's your money? Is it, is it, are you on Colonia, of course, who's missed the steady Eddie when it comes to the tour races? Are you going for the fresh face Legkoff to take the overall World Cup win? Or will it be uh, Petter Nortuk who leads at the moment? This is the man who's certainly going to win the distance World Cup. Yeah, it's never been tighter at all, Patrick. When that, and Legkoff, I'm, I'm so pleased for the Russians for Legkoff. But yeah, you mentioned 34 points. He's behind Nortuk right now. Colonia, 43. And Colonia is just such a steady, progressive athlete. Uh, he won't be flustered that he's looking uh, slightly out of it at the moment, but uh, I'm quite sure he'll come back. Heikinen, he's had a terrible season by his high standards, but he's having a, a flying race today. Set the fastest time at the high point on the mountain. So Heikinen coming into his final stages. Helner, 4.9 off. Uh, that's a bad indication to be uh, about five seconds off at this stage. It's going to be a tough journey for him to the finish line. Hiking in for the, into the final 150 metres. He's tying up badly. Five thirty-one, just outside. Well, that's a shame for Heikinen. As Mike says, uh, three minutes at the top of the climb at 1.2 kilometres, 2.5 outside. It's all about pacing, and it's slightly surprising, you may feel, that they don't know what the perfect pacing is on a race like this. However, they race this prologue distance maybe once or twice a season, and that's why they find it so difficult to come to terms with it. Big tumble from Maddie Heikkinen. Won't affect his time. 